Nick Bockwinkel and Kurt Henning going head-to-head -head over the AWA World Heavyweight Championship with special guest referee Billy Robinson in a tracksuit for some goddamn reason and ended in controversy, and the crowd booed. Boy, Vern Gagne sure loved to torch the goodwill that he had with the fans, but at least it ended with a bloody, very bloody steel cage match for the AWA Tag Team Championships with Sherry screaming outside. But man, what a goddamn main event that was. The rest of the show, though... Boy, you kind of see why Vern Gagne's territory really went down and fast. I'm John Renton with the retroview of AWA Brawl in St. Paul on Christmas Day in 1986. It's a Merry Vern Gagne Christmas, everybody. 8,000 people in the St. Paul Civic Center. To give you a bit of clarity as to how little that is compared to previous years, AWA Super Sunday in April of 1983 did a sellout and also had closed circuit capabilities in a few venues nearby <laughs> and even in 1984 they were doing pretty well even wrestle rock you know that that show did pretty well and then a few months later they would do awa super clash 2 at the cow palace and draw about 3,000 people Vern Gagne really really just wanted to watch his uh company erode now there's nothing wrong with Vern Gagne running his company the way he did when it was successful, but he didn't want to change with the times, and boy, it certainly cost him. This is available on YouTube under, I believe, Classic Wrestling Stuff, uh, that user. I'm not trying to call out any copyright strike, but it's just cool that events like this are on there. And I've already reviewed a bunch of other AWA Christmas events and World Class Championship Wrestling Thanksgiving and Christmas events. I wish it would put up the ones from 88, but I digress. <laughs> This at least had a mostly hot crowd, but there were a lot of drunk fans. A lot of drunk fans yelling, and not exactly sure how they thought this event was going to come off. There was actually a match cut from the original broadcast. Uh, commentary by Ron Trongard and Dick Jankowski. Yeah, Ron Trongard had very, very weird hair. Very, very weird hair. It's like somebody took burnt ramen and put it on top of his head. Yeah, I'm sorry if Dick, uh, you know, Ron Trongard, by the way, Dick Trongard. Let's just uh, centipede them together. Ron Junkowski and Dick Trongard. That's what we'll call them. I don't know if he's still alive, but he had weird hair. So they did cut Buck Zumhoff versus Buddy Wolf. It was a 15-minute draw, and you know what? Anytime I don't have to try and endure Buck Zumhoff, which, <laughs> read up on Buck Zumhoff. If you want to know why a lot of wrestling people, fans, and Wrestlers that work with him and even some historians have nothing really nice to say about Buck Zumhoff. Incest. Let, let's just say that's it. And also he loved to assault women, including his own daughter. Buck Zumhoff's a piece of shit and hopefully will rot and die in prison. <laughs> Earthquake Ferris, who honest to God looked like if you... Looked like if you tried to put PN News in a tracksuit. A lot of tracksuit talk on this review. And he took on Brian Nobbs. Very, very loud fans calling Ferris, like, a lot of, you know, insulting his weight. And to be fair, he was a big lad, but there have been bigger that have moved better. Earthquake Ferris was not one of those people that moved all that well. He was winded from the very beginning. He did eventually hit a uh, Ferris wheel airplane spin and hit a splash one, two, three. And he seemed jovial after beating Brian Nobbs. I assume, couldn't really understand what he was saying. I don't think he knew what the hell he was saying. It was fortunately only a four-minute match. And then we get Boris Zukov with Sheik Adnan L. Casey. Boris Zukov, by the way, probably most famous to uh, WWF slash WWE fans as being one half of the Bolsheviks that got beat by the Hart Foundation at Mania 6 in 30 seconds. If that. That was kind of funny, though. I believe Boris Zukov was one of them. And, yeah, Sheik Adnan L. Casey was the manager of Sergeant Slaughter during his brief heel turn. That happened at the end of 1990... And was over right after SummerSlam 91. Vince McMahon wanted to ex or, you know, uh, exploit the Persian Gulf War. And then found out that that really didn't work. He wasn't being very smart there. Anyway, Steve-O. Steve Olinowski. Ol Olinowski. I actually don't know. Steve-O is what they call him. Not the guy from Jackass. <laughs> you know, the guy who knows sold Umaga's offense. And deserved to, quite frankly, be, be snapped in two. USA, USA chance, because Boris Zukov, by the way, was a Russian. 
Steve-O was, looked painfully generic, but was a fine worker. A lot of headlocks. There's nothing wrong with having Matt work and doing some good stuff where you can work the fans into it. But the fans weren't, the fans were sort of into Steve-O, but the fans weren't really into this match. They, lots of drunk fans yelling at ringside is what I noted. Maybe they eventually kicked them out or maybe they eventually pissed themselves and passed out. I'm not really sure. Later, Steve-O misses an elbow and Borzukov hits one of his own. <laughs> and she pushes uh, Steve-O's foot off the ropes and, and to break up the pin. One, two, three, and there you go. All right, Borzukov gets a victory. Fortunately, the show picked up a little bit from here. A little bit, but not much. We get Greg Gagne, Leon White, and Scott Hall. Leon White, by the way, may be more famously known as Vader. This is before he became Vader, but my God, he was a beast here. He was just fresh off of football, getting into his wrestling career. They took on Larry Zabisco, Mr. Saito, and the Super Ninja. I will never understand why Larry Zabisco had the Super Ninja with him. Why did Larry Zabisco need a ninja? Where did he find this ninja? Why was this ninja here? Why was this ninja six foot seven? Giant Don Karras, I believe, was one of the other names that he had. Um... <clears throat> And I believe Jerry Sags was the referee. If not, it was his body double because he just looked so much like... Jer they sometimes reference the referees by name. Other times they didn't. Um, and Leon was a beast, an absolute beast. Same fans yelling wife beater for some reason. Who was a wife beater here? You know what? I don't, I, I don't know and I don't care. A pre-Vader, Leon White. Some good some good action here, but the thing is, this was just put to fill time. It, they really would have been better off putting another match on here. I understand these guys are feuding with each other. They really tried with Greg Gagne, who's a very, who was a very, very good worker. A very good worker. A stupid hat's falling on my... Actually, it's not a stupid hat. It's just stupid how I put it on. This is great because uh, an elderly lady that used to be a customer at a store that I used to work at, <laughs> her and her husband gave hats out that she knitted. And I've had this for over 10 years. And it's a great way to be festive. Merry Vern Gagne Christmas, everybody. Nerve Hold City by the Giant Ninja. Not Super Giant Ninja. Not yet the Super Je Yeti Ninja. Remember when they turned the Yeti into a Super Giant Ninja? And they made him Ron Reese and all that. And God, geez, WCW is a mess. This wasn't WCW. Because the NWA at this time was drawing record-breaking business in 1986. AWA was only drawing 8,000 people in the St. Paul Civic Center that... Could see at least 16. I think could see actually close to 20. Um, maybe a little bit more if you opened up all the seats. So they were heading downhill. We get a melee and lots of near falls. We get some messiness because this move, this movie, this, it actually felt like a long running movie. This match probably should have ended, oh, I don't know, three, four minutes before it did. But it didn't. Um, eventually we get a power, we get a power spot from the giant ninja and then we get a second ref. This went off the rails quickly. Scott Ledoux was a referee or was the second referee. Something about him having a broken hand. Larry Zbysko now wanting Scott Ledoux to be a referee. We got another guy here. And this was, the face team won. <laughs> Even though the camera missed the pinfall, because the camera was, I think it was like three cameras that were trying to follow about, you know, 18 different people involved in this. And then the announcers kill time. Dick Trongard and Ron Jonkowski, Joneskowski, whatever. Anyway, Nick Bockwinkle and Kurt Henning had an AWA championship match. It was a classic. It was great stuff. It was well done, as you would expect with these guys. Nick, even though he was AWA champion into his early 50s, could still go, could still do incredible things. One of, if not the classiest world champion of all time. Him and Luthez, probably. But great, great action. These two tore the house down. Great stuff, and the fans were into it. They were absolutely into it. Kurt was so smooth. Nick made him seem like a world beater. Billy Robinson was in a tracksuit as a referee for some reason. I guess they didn't want to try to put Billy Robinson, who was a classic shooter, in any kind of referee garb. Back body drop. Always had the Vince line <laughs> saying that. Later, we get a ref bump. And it was intentional by Nick. Of course it was intentional. We get a missile drop kick, and Kurt Henning's ready. But Kurt had apparently dumped Nick over the top rope at one point, so that's why the DQ was called. Not that, not because Nick intentionally bumped the referee, but because of an over-the-top rope thing, which is the same thing they did at AWA Super Sunday, and the fans booed. The problem is, there were more fans in the St. Paul Civic Center at that point than there were here. And when they ever sh when they shot the camera, like it was in like a bowl area <clears throat> in from the camera side out so you're looking you're looking out this way really should be careful doing that 
you're looking out like that. Really need to point with just my finger doing that. <clears throat> but looking out, you just see empty seats. And you can see fans leaving in droves after this. There were fans chanting bullshit. Uh, Kurt was upset. Everybody was upset. Nick was cutting a promo, and then because of the technical difficulties that were set at the beginning of this, the network, the original network broadcast of this tape, we slam right into Jimmy Snuka, renowned murderer Jimmy Snuka, by the way. Fuck Jimmy Snuka. I'm glad he's dead. I hope he suffered terribly for not facing a bit of jail time for what he did to Nancy Argentino. And he took on Colonel De Beers. And Jimmy Snuka beat down, or beat him down, bloodied him, and wouldn't take no for an answer and kept beating him down everything, channeling what he did to Nancy Argentino. Again, fuck Jimmy Snuka. And got DQ'd because he shoved the ref. That was four minutes. That was four minutes of, you know, a show that <laughs> could have been dedicated to something else. I know that they had a small crew, but you would have thought they could have put other people on there. There wasn't anybody else they could have put on for maybe a five-minute match instead of giving that six-man tag about 20 million years. And then we got another good tag match. We got Midnight Rockers, Mario Gennetti, and Shawn Michaels. Gee, I wonder what uh, Shawn Michaels ended up doing with his life. I don't really think he ended up amounting to anything. I kid, I kid, of course. He did some great shit. Helped screw Brett. Got clean. Traded one addiction for another, and now um, is keeping one eye on NXT and one eye on his future. <laughs> Playboy Buddy Rose and Pretty Boy Duck Summers were their opponents. Sherry just screaming outside, screaming like crazy, as she was known to do. Steel cage match for the AWA World Tag Team Championships. And blood, 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 and carnage. Not the Spider-Man villain. The spinoff of Venom. Venom, Venom... There's some good stuff here. Doug Summers and Shawn Michaels were messes, especially. <laughs> and we get a crossbody off the top. One, two, three. Big pop. Midnight Rockers win the tag team championships. And then we get a brawl afterwards to lead to some rematches because the heels were like, no, 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 we must beat these baby faces down. We must beat them down and everything. And they wanted to be the, they thought they were still the champions, but they weren't. And there you go. That's, that's it. It's about 102 minutes. Not bad. I mean, it picked up as far as the steel cage match that's the one to really check out the six-man tag is fine for what it is but you can see it clearly go off the rails and the awa world tag or world title match easy for me to say is good except it has the same finish they had in so many others and yes you would get that on the house shows in so many other territories but the way they did was convoluted the fans had seen it a lot and they were getting annoyed with it and nick bockwinkle would eventually drop it to kurt henning at awa super clash 2 but then Kurt would drop it to Jerry Lawler just over a year later, I think, if I remember right. And Nick Bockwinkle, I believe, would be retired after he dropped it to um, <laughs> Kurt. So this was almost like a last big hurrah for Nick. I mean, Nick would have subsequent few other matches in Japan and stuff like that, but he primarily retired. He'd been wrestling for so many goddamn years and been such a classy world champion. He was also almost in, or, you know, at or just over 50, but it was good stuff. It, as far as that, as far as some parts of this show, actually, they were pretty good. The thing is, this is also one of the last decent AWA events that's available. There are some other ones like Battle by the Bay <clears throat> and Wrestling for a Cure. Find Wrestling for a Cure on YouTube. AWA Wrestling for a Cure. And if, you can, if you're lucky enough, find the ones that have the original tape, you know, master tape, the broadcast. Somebody taped it, like, off of the broadcast, and it had all the... Boston or slash Massachusetts centric commercials and it's incredible. I think there were ones for shoes and like cars. It made me laugh. Anyway, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin and a Merry Vern Christmas. See you soon.